We've got over Axel Gate. It is the Electric Picnic 2010. Beardy Man is here. Uh, it's it's been a few years since I've it's been a couple of years since I've seen you, and I've got to say I'm I'm glad you're sitting down. I'm certainly glad I'm sitting down because the the height differential last time was was really quite startling. It I was embarrassing. It, but it, it was frankly uh, it was it was it was it was a letdown for my fans to, to see how short I, I was because you're not that tall you're what five five I'm five, five nine three, something five, like that five three five four five three yeah. five four mm. five four and a half yeah i'm two foot three two foot three right. yeah grand well i must say you've grown hugely since i have then. i was only five then really yeah what age are you now Ten. seven no seven, seven technically something like that. we're not good at numbers are we no no i'm no, numerically challenged never me too. never never good at numbers at all now last time i spoke to you you, you were kind of I asked you about an album, and you said, oh, well, you know, they didn't give me a straight answer. Um, and I hear that, uh, and I realise why now. Uh, I hear you've, um, you've almost finished an album, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I'm, I'm nearly finished. Um, it's a long process making an album, because, I mean, I'm, I make music all the time, like when I'm playing a set, but um, it's over and done with as soon as it's made and I throw it away as soon as it's done or if it's good I'll put it up online and I'll kind of maybe edit it slightly or I'll just mix the sound a bit better but when it's an album that's for listening to and these tracks are all for different reasons you know they, they all exist for different reasons like you, you know I'll, I'll make loads of these tracks and then you've got to ask yourself well what's what are these for like why would I want to put these on something which people would want to buy? Like, is this for DJs? Is it a dance track? Is this something that work in a club? Is this something you want to put on while you're sitting chilling with mates? Is this something you want to put on while you're getting jiggy with your lover? Or is this something that you just want to put on to listen to? Is it something you want to, like, music has a purpose to a certain extent. So I tend not to worry too much about that when I'm playing a live gig because it's like, well, this is either funny or it's just, or it's, or it's to dance to, or it's because I've said I'm going to make metal mixed with um, jazz um, about like duck eggs or some, I don't know whatever whatever the crowd suggested or whatever like but wait, when you're making an album you've set the briefs well I've set the briefs you didn't set any of the briefs but no. like um, yeah I could have given you ideas you could do didn't. if you've got any ideas please let me know I, d I don't think they'd be up to much now in fairness I think um, you're <laughs> better off yourself yeah, but it's nearly done. It's nearly done. It's nearly finished. Brilliant. Um, I, I was going to ask you what record label is coming out on, but I know. I know these things. I am. Um, I have friends in low places, a bit like Garth Brooks. Um, you, uh, you were telling me you got shoes thrown at you. Where was that? In Australia. This is a while ago. And it's because I, I was doing a cover of I Want to Be a Hippie by... Who was that by... Whoever it was by, they didn't have any other hits. I want to be a hippie I and I want song, to get yeah. stoned on Marama. I think I was the only person in the UK that liked that song. I'm the only person in the world probably that liked I've that song. I've been trying to forget that song. Exactly, actually. I know, but I really enjoyed it. So I, know, so I was doing a cover of that song, but I, I did it for like maybe a minute too long. Because you, if you're going to do that song, you should do it for a joke. But I kind of did it and then just got carried away. And then a shoe came flying at my... I think it hit me on the shoulder. And that was the first and only time I've ever felt for George Bush. And do you remember what type of shoe it was? Uh, I think it was like a plimsoll kind of sneakery kind of thing. It wasn't God. like a, well, not like a work shoe. Well, you're lucky it wasn't a George Webb or a Dock or something like that. That could have exactly like, that would have done some damage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That gets in your eye. Uh, it would take your eye out completely. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the live show has uh, has changed, I'm told. I didn't. I missed your set. Sorry, I, I was chatting to people. Uh, it's, it's changed. Uh, I, I think it was... Um, I like that. You know, I'm too cool to come to your sets. I was I having won't. conversations with people. You know? I am not cool. Not just standing around trying to be one of the herd. Yeah? I am not your cool gig? in the least. Not cool <laughs> in the least. Um, I'm, uh, don't worry, I'm fine with it. It's all right. It's I'd fine. say you're pretty cool. Um, okay, fair enough, I am. Anyway. Um, but, uh, no, I was only joking, you're not really. Well, come on, I am or I am, <laughs> make up your mind. It, that's for you to, to, if you find the cool inside, then you can be cool. All right, okay. There's ice in your heart. No, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> What are we talking about? The live show. The live it's show, it's, yeah. You've got some sort of a spaceship, or that's the way you're... you're uh, you described uh, it. You're, you're, your manager yeah, described it. Yeah, that's that. the best way to describe it. Because if you... Yeah, it's it's my live rig. It's, it's designed for live looping. It's just loads of shop-bought equipment, which, like, some bits of it are to, to turn my voice into a choir or to, like, double up my voice so it's got, like, sort of effects on it so it sounds just more like... Like doubling and stuff like never mind what it does it sounds awesome and then there's like 
other things I've got synthesizers and mixers to brute all this stuff together and massage the sound so it actually sounds good once it comes out because most people don't know if you're not in music or production but like there's a lot that's done to make all the instruments in a track sit together and it's not just the, the volumes that they're at you've got to compress the sound and then you can raise the volume and everything sounds nice and chunky and so there's there's loads going on in my live setup and there's chaos pads everywhere and there are these DJ effect units that I use and it's just a lot of electronics. So the best way to describe it is a spaceship because it, it, like, it looks like one. It is really complicated. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I know in other interviews you've had people say, oh, teach me how to do human beatbox. I'm not, I'm not going to do that because firstly, I don't believe I'd be particularly good. <laughs> and secondly, I, I'm just not bothered. I'm going to leave it to you. <laughs> I'm going to leave it to you because you're good. <laughs> okay. Can, can you give us a little bit of a demonstration? Then we'll allow you to leave. Okay. I can, um, but with the disclaimer that my voice is battered from um, not having slept over the last 24 hours. So I'll do something that doesn't involve my voice going particularly high because I can probably manage that. That. should stand up actually just to show you see separated at birth beardy man <laughs> thank you very much thank you very great much. to see you again he's standing on a box it's just it's just to help his career this whole you know <laughs> thank you man cool. thanks man